From September 1998 to July 2008, Gorillaz lived in Kong Studios, which lay on a hilltop in Essex. Until 2008, Gorillaz produced Kong Studios as their HQ and studio, and the building was accessible on Gorillaz.com, where fans could go on the site and explore Gorillaz's home, where they could find each member's room and play mini games until Murdoch burned it down and left. Now, I don't think it's been spoken of its history except in Rise of the Yoga. But I thought I'd make a video on it for people who don't have the book, so let's get started. Before Kong Studios, all that was there was a henge-like structure, and before any construction, the building was used as a meeting point for the Goat Clan during the Lunar Cycle. The first building that was made laid on top of a disused cemetery, the disused cemetery being used as a body dumping ground during the plague of 1665. The first Kong mansion was made in 1749, being named after Sir Emerick Kong. The last known owners were a biker gang called the Nomads, using the building as a clubhouse. One night in 1993, they held a massive party with Hell's Angels from all over the Midlands. There were 2,000 bikers crammed into the basement. But when the party got out of control, a fire started and someone had locked the main exit to prevent anyone from escaping, causing them to burn to a crisp. Murdoch found Kong Studios in September 1998 on the website Gigantic Disused Haunted Studio Mansions in the Middle of Nowhere.com. The owners were only looking for an off season caretaker to take care of the building during the winter, but when Murdoch arrived for the interview, the owners threw the keys at him and ran down the hill screaming. Murdoch had found his new home, along with 2D. During Phase 1, Kong Studios had many interactive characters and had a main server called Mel. Welcome to Kong Studios. This is the starting point. You may as well come in. Who oversees everything that happens at Kong Studios in the back end. His voice normally glitched, causing random spikes. What was that? That's Noodle's dog. I hate dogs. He has shown great hatred for the band. This is where the gang made their first two award winning studio albums. If you ask me, they were complete shit. Even calling them a bunch of idiots. During Phase 1, the graveyard could be seen outside, along with Thriller dancing gorillas. The building was most notably creepy at night, with thunder and lightning outside. During the band's absence, a bunch of monkeys got into the studio, which wouldn't be a hard job because 2D forgot to look up Kong. They then stole the master tapes from Gorilla's debut album, and made the remix album, Like I Come Home. Between Phase 1 and 2, due to the band's absence, the building had gone into despair. The building was then taped off by the Essex authorities and they placed a porter cabin to work as a control center and that was the only way the building could be accessed. During Gorilla's absence, Kong found itself full of zombies. That was until Noodle returned in 2004 to clear up Kong and started work on Demon Days, which was then followed up with a reunion with her band members. Then on December 8, 2004, Kong was reopened along with the premiere of Rocket. 2005's Phase 2 Kong Studios had similar things to the 2001-2 Phase 1 Kong Studios with the return of Mel and other characters. I asked some people for their experiences on the website and here's one coming from Reddit. On December 26th of the same year, we got an MTV Cribs episode with Murdoch showing us around Kong Studios. But after it went missing in the El Mignano video in 2006, the building had once again entered a state of despair, along with Tudy and Russell leaving the band. Then on October 26, 2006, Noodle's voice could be heard from the radio room in the basement of Kong Studios. From 2006 to 8, Kong Studios was unattended and could be visibly seen on the verge of complete destruction. Kong was later put up on the website that Murdoch got it from, Gigantic Disuse Haunted Studio Mansions in the Middle of Nowhere.com. The studio was then reclaimed by a surrounding environment before Murdoch burnt Kong's studios to the ground on July 25th, 2008. He then blamed it on a bunch of kids that was arrested and cashed in on the insurance money and took the helicopters out of storage from the Feel Good Inc. video and fled what was left. Now if you've been following my Instagram, which will be in the description, then you will know that I asked you guys for some questions, and I also introduced something new, 
will ask you guys for questions on my Instagram story and after every video I'll answer your questions or explain. So this video's question is from Miguel. He asked, who narrated the Rise of the Ogre audiobook? And it was narrated by Joss Eklund. Hopefully this answered your question. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll be back in the next one.